The world which inhabits the continent is one full of mystery. As magic surrounds the land, the conjunction of the spheres allowed creatures from all over the multiverses to relocate in different areas. Humans, dwarves, elves, and all the other races found themselves within new homes. However, now having to fight off against terrifying creatures who would raid their villages looking for food for their own survival. The universe was now a vast, dangerous place with many deadly creatures. But as life carried on, all the races found their way of dealing with these creatures and began to live in their own areas, studying magic, creating cultures and living the best they could. Whilst the witches helped societies rebuild and lived away from the fear of ghouls and wraiths, they would encounter extremely powerful beings known as the Wild Hunt, elves from a far off land. Others would encounter almost impossible to kill elder vampires, however this was on very rare occasions. However, although these creatures seemed to be the biggest threat there was to them, there was one being un known to many who lurk there in the background, watching over everything. This man or creature would know everything that is going on, would blend into scenarios to witness events, would appear and disappear when needed. But most importantly, this being would grant the person any wish they desired, and upon these being granted would take their soul. If they did not do what was requested or failed in their tests, they would also be cursed. This being would be the most powerful being in the known witch universe. This is the tale behind the being known as Gaunter Odim, also known as the Master Mirror. Centuries had gone by since the conjunction of the spheres, with many races surviving and building their societies. The Wild Hunt were a prime example of a faction that had seen their world change massively, and had moved to a new land to start up their new society. Elder vampires had lived for decades in this time, and like with the elves, had built a world around them, starting packs that would see them avoid humans and not use them as cattle for the slaughter to fill their hunger. It is unknown when and where Gaunter Odim, the Master of Mirrors, came from? Did he appear before the conjunction of the spheres, or was it after? Was he even behind the cataclysm event? No one knows. For you see, Gaunter Odim is a nobody, wearing the most basic of clothing. He lurks in the background with no one giving him a glance at all. His head shaved, his face looking plain, and his trade relatively unknown. Before 1272, the being known as Gaunter Odim was a mystery, just another being living in this universe, another number that littered the land. But despite his lack of any notable features, the only thing we know about him was that he was supposedly a mirror merchant before the Third Northern War. Now, he is just a simple vagrant roaming the land, looking for people to meet and trade with, or so it would seem. The year is now 1272, the Third Northern War is now in full swing, and Geralt along with his fellow witcher Vesemir are on a quest to locate Geralt's beloved Yennefer and find his young ward known as Ciri. As their search continues, it is at a tavern in White Orchard where we first meet the being known as Gaunter Odim. Sitting on his own within the tavern, Odim seemed to blend into the background, with Geralt almost unaware of his presence. Desperate for information, he seeks everyone's help within the tavern, when suddenly Odim states he can help. But to Geralt's shock, not only did this man know exactly who Geralt was looking for, he knew the name of Yennefer, knew the name of his friend, the bard known as Dandelion, as well as his ballads about Geralt. Stating he had just heard local rumours and tales of his adventures, Geralt accepted the drink from the stranger and pushed him for more answers. Yennefer was priority and this man seemed to have useful information. Gaunter explained to the Witcher that the Nilfgaardian garrison was the place to go to help him on his travels and his quest. This information was huge for Geralt, it was finally a place he could begin to look. He was getting closer to his goal. Asking what he owed the man, Gaunter refused any reward, stating that one day he may need Geralt's help. After this he disappeared almost in thin air. Where did he go? What help did he need later? And who was he were all questions that Geralt had to ask himself another time. For now, Yennefer and Ciri needed to be found. Weeks flew past with no sign of that mysterious man at all. The Witcher had forgotten about his presence and how he was the one who helped guide him in the first place. But despite him not being present in that form anyway, Gaunter was there, in the background, guiding events, watching over scenarios, pulling the strings, making sure that when the day came that he needed help, Geralt 
Geralt would be there. He needed him and his skills to get what he wanted. More weeks passed as Geralt continued to learn about the Wild Hunt's presence and what they wanted with Ciri, when suddenly Geralt found himself tasked with a contract given by a soldier known as Olgierd von Everick. Accepting that Geralt ventured out to kill the beast plaguing the sewers under the city of Oxenfurt. However, killing the beast, it was clear that this wasn't actually a terrifying monster, but a cursed of fiery prince known as Prince Sirvat. But who cursed him? And why? But before Geralt could come to terms with what had just happened after being knocked out, the Ophiri army had captured him and started transporting him to be executed for murdering a member of royalty. It was a dark, damp boat that Geralt woke up in, with a prisoner to his side. He needed to get out. The soldiers clearly didn't realise that the prince had been cursed, and the Witcher had no idea that was the prince, but it was no good. He was stuck, and his fate was sealed, or so he thought. Lurking in the dark at the other end of the boat was a man who suddenly appeared. It was Gaunter. Immediately, Geralt recognised him. It was the same man who helped him find Yennefer back in White Orchard. But how did he get there? Who was he? And how was he able to sneak onto a fiery boat without a disguise? But Geralt couldn't get an answer. He only got a choice. He could be saved by Gaunter Odim, but he would be in his debt. Or he would be left to be hung. After reluctantly accepting his help, Geralt was brandished with a mark on his face that had the vague sign of letters G.O. Gaunter's initials. He had now put himself in a contract with this mysterious being that had not explained himself to Geralt, but he knew he wasn't normal, and possibly something like a soothsayer. Immediately after the deal, a giant storm smashed into the boat, freeing Geralt from captivity. Well, to some extent. Maybe it was a coincidence, or maybe Gaunter's magic was extremely powerful and had set up the storm in the first place. It was clear from this that Geralt had to tread carefully around him, especially now he was in his debt. After returning to meet Gaunter at the crossroads, he suggested Geralt would hear a group of children singing the song, usually a normal occurrence in the land, but the lyrics told of a much creepier, dark situation. These children would sing, his smile fair as spring, as told him he draws you. His tongue sharp and silvery, as he implores you. Your wishes he grants, as he swears to adore you. Gold, silver, jewels, he lays riches before you. They call him the man of glass, master mirror. Jews need be repaid, and he will come for you. All to reclaim, no smile to console you. He will snare you in bonds, eyes glowing, a fire. To gore and torment you, till the stars expire. After listening to their tale, Gaunter appeared around midnight, almost out of thin air. It was here where Geralt once again questioned his abilities. What was he? A mage? A soothsayer? A djinn? But Gaunter never said. Instead just told Geralt of his request. He made a pact with the man known as Orgid, who Geralt dealt with before. The man who had cursed the Olfiri prince in an act of revenge. But he needed Geralt to make sure Olgird's requests were undertaken, no matter how impossible they were. He was his champion. Knowing his fate, Olgird set Geralt with some impossible tasks. Knowing that once they were complete, Gaunter Odib would take his soul, and the pact would have been completed. Whilst Geralt took to these requests, he at the same time sought out the help of what was really going on with Gauntaro Dim. Here he met with a man known as Professor Shakeslog, a blind man who had been looking into the being Geralt knew under the name of Gauntaro Dim. Here he discovered that this being had been talked about before. Records show his presence in many places under different names, but still never sure what he was, only that he was always under the alias of Master Mirror. Granted people wishes and eventually took their souls once their wishes had been granted. Both Geralt and the Professor were desperate to find a way to hit back against the untouchable being, so much so that the Professor had gone blind, reading every book he could that could hit back against him. The only thing the Professor knew was that Gaunter was one thing. He was evil incarnate. Eventually Geralt came up with a plan to hit back against Gaunter. That was to use his own words, his own riddles against him, and stop him from taking souls from unwilling individuals. However, Gaunter was clever and had already played tricks on the Professor, granting him a wish which would allow him to be unharmed physically. However, this came at a cost. See, he could not stand outside of the marked ring on the floor. As Geralt went to leave, the Professor was pushed out of the ring as Geralt tried to protect him from the falling ceiling, but because of this, he was outside of the ring, and the professor would slip on a bottle and be killed then and there. Master Mirror had struck again. The thing the professor was most scared of had come true, and Gaunter had another soul to add to his collection. 
Geralt needed to meet with him once again. He was desperate to find out what this being was and why he needed those souls. But it was here where Geralt witnessed more of his abilities and his true power and nature. In a frustration with the people in the tavern, Gaunter stopped time and allowed him to speak to Geralt without disturbance. Not only could he grant wishes, put curses on people and gather souls, he could also command time and manipulate it. This being was powerful. Geralt immediately thought, could this be a demon? Asking him what he was, Gaunter did not lie, however told Geralt that he did not want to know what he was, becoming firm with Geralt. Clearly Gaunter was not messing about and was extremely dangerous, so much so that his true identity should never be questioned. After the meeting, Gaunter utilised his abilities and killed a man in cold blood, sticking a spoon in his eye, then unpausing time. Meaning to everyone else in that tavern, this man dropped dead without anyone touching him, leading some to believe it was due to the presence of the Witcher. Geralt had now completed his impossible tasks, but it was now time for him to do one more, to take Olgird to a specific place, to finally hand him and his soul over to Master Mirror. Olgird had made it so it was impossible for Gaunter to take his soul, stating that it had to be on the moon. However, Gaunter was clever and twisted his words and found that one specific location fit the description perfectly and meant he could finally acquire his soul. Olgird was doomed, however Geralt knew how to hit back and used his own tricks against him. Here Geralt took Olgird's contract on and said if he could solve the riddle fully under Gaunter's rules, he would keep his soul and Gaunter would leave them both alone. Here Gaunter said the riddle asking what was he? The riddle given was to all things and men I obtain, and yet by some am shunned and disdained. Fondle me and ogle me till you're insane, but no blow can harm me, cause me pain. Children delight in me, elders take fright. Fair maids rejoice and spin, cry and I weep, yawn and I sleep, smile and I too shall grin. What am I? Geralt was determined to get this right because if he didn't, his soul would be gone forever. But what could this riddle mean? What was it? Not only was he trying to get this right, but Gaunter had also set illusions along the way to distract Geralt in his quest. But Geralt was smart enough to ignore them and fight his way through. He finally figured it out. The riddle could only mean one thing. The thing Gaunter was known for before he became a vagrant he was now. Mirror. The answer was mirror or so he initially thought. Finding the Hall of Mirrors inside the illusion, Geralt needed to find the right one. But then he realised the one thing that Master Mirror had done within all of his contracts, all of his curses, all of the things he granted people. They were just reflections of what those people truly wanted or who they were as people. Olgird was harsh on people. He wasn't empathetic or cared for those around him. He truly had a heart of stone and because of it Master Mirror cursed him with immortality and an actual heart of stone. And even Geralt was somewhat cursed with an impossible task. A man who always had to complete contracts for a living to save people from monsters or themselves had now been given a task which if he got wrong he would be doomed forever. This was the the answer. It wasn't mirror to some extent, it was a reflection of oneself. Venturing through this area, Geralt realised the fountain was now without water, but thanks to quick thinking, he was able to find a way to open up the water source and add it once again to the fountain. Looking in, Geralt could only see himself, but then suddenly, there was Gaunter Odim. Geralt had successfully found him and solved Gaunter's own riddle under his own rules. He had finally been defeated by the man who could do the impossible. The creature known as Gaunter Odim started to fade away, with part of his true form now on show, breaking into ash. As he faded away into the abyss, he said one final thing to Geralt, but in a foreign, unknown language. However, some were able to translate this, and as Master Mirror faded away, he stated to Geralt, You are insignificant. You think you've defeated me, but you are wrong. I can't be killed. I will be back. But for now, Gaunter Odim, the Master of Mirrors, was gone, and the curses and marks had been lifted for both Geralt and Olgird. But this wasn't in fact the end of Master Mirror or his work. In fact, just a taste of some of his known work dotted all over the continent. In fact, as Geralt journeyed to Tucson to work on a royal contract, he would come into contact with the Spotted White, the last of their kind. But this wasn't a normal one. 
Instead, when he went to see her, spoons littered the house, markings on the wall, mirrors smashed, and skeletons lay on the ground. This white was actually just a cursed human, hidden away from the rest of society. Geralt once again had to solve another riddle. He needed to work out why she could not eat or bear to look at herself, and eventually was able to bring the lady back to her normal self. It was here where he was able to learn the true nature of her curse. You see, in the ancient tradition of Tucson, if a beggar displays a spoon and asks her homeowner for food and water, that homeowner has to supply them with that, or bad luck will hit them. Marlene, the cursed lady, turned down the beggar, and because of it, was cursed, unable to eat or even look at herself within the mirror because of her new appearance. All the curse signs pointed at the workings of Master Mirror once again, and the curse she was hit with was a reflection of her actions. But this is just one curse of many that probably litter the multiverses. One of the many people that took a contract or messed about with the Master Mirror and paid the price. Master Mirror's name still rings out amongst other people within the continent as well, with a group of dwarves selling the Golden Chalice to a man they claim was called Mr. Mirrorsy. Although Geralt had beaten him at his own game, Master Mirror could change his appearance, could travel anywhere he wanted, could manipulate space and time and many other things things. He could be anywhere, in the background, disguised as a beggar, on top of a building, listening, waiting for his opportunity to find you at your weakest. Then when you need help, he will be there, ready to sign you into a deal that will see you cursed and your soul under his control. But that leaves one question, who or what is Gauntero Din, also known as Master Mirror? Well, it is certain that he is not a djinn, a soothsayer, or a mage. His abilities are far too powerful for a being like that. Gaunter is unlike anything else we've seen before and is certainly unique. His abilities could even destroy an elder vampire if he so wished. The professor had the closest description of who he is. He is an embodiment of pure evil, a creature that looks to control others lesser than him for his own entertainment or a purpose none of us will ever know. So could this mean that Master Mirror is the devil or something similar? This could be very likely as he is able to control everything within the known universe and is able to take souls for his collection. His manipulation means he is always ahead of everyone he meets and is able to twist their words into whatever he wants them to say or mean. However, he never lies. He could also be the being known as God, which has been occasionally mentioned in travels, but in a more negative light. The main thing to note is that his initials spell out G-O-D. God. He has the power to manipulate everything around him, as said before, and appear when people beg for help. On top of that, he appears just like a common friendly individual, a sort of generic looking human something that doesn't stand out from the crowd. And as we know from the stories of God's son within the Bible, that he was seen as just a simple human who walked the earth. Maybe this is very fitting for the notion that Gaunter is actually God himself. Either way, the being is powerful enough to create miracles far beyond anything seen before with just mages, even the ones who have been around for centuries. Whilst demon is a vague term, he could be an extremely higher powered demonic entity that preys on the creatures within the worlds down below. We have never met a demon before, so it is unsure what one could look like, and even Geralt himself seemed confused by this notion. But with all that said, maybe he is God, maybe he is the devil or a fallen angel, or maybe he is something else that we do not know of yet. One thing is for certain though, Gauntor Odin may be gone for now, but he is too powerful to be gone forever. One day he will return like he said to Geralt, and will be back to gather more souls. He has already said himself that it is possible for a soul to return if someone so wished, so his return is inevitable. For Gaunter Odim, the master mirror, is the reflection of the evil and insecurities of the world, and he will eventually get what he wants. And thus ends the tale of the master mirror. And there we go, that is the known lore of the Master Mirror. I hope you guys like this video. It's a bit of a different one as it's more of a look back at the story of the game, but I try to make it original and entertaining. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you did like it, please give it a like, maybe share it and subscribe if you haven't already. Also make sure you check out the other lore videos I have in the playlist below and support me on my social medias and my Twitch platform if you 
really want to support me, that is. Also, if you really, really like this video, why not support me on Patreon or here on YouTube? And speaking of, I'd like to thank my supporters real quick. Big thanks to our big fish, Duquesne 23, Sacrum and Rhino Head, our Sharks, the AVP Man and Connor, and our four huge Megalodons, Sinus, Jacob Garcia, JJD896, and Well Such Gaming. Also, big shout out to our YouTube member, our wise one, Jambu, as well as all my amazing subscribers over on Twitch. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you guys. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. But that is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.